Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review of a recent dinner I had with Chateau Angelis. It was hosted at the Vancouver Club and um, it was a very unique uh, evening where we got to drink four different vintages of Chateau Angelis. So um, I'm not going to go through the menu. I will tell you what we had, but out of respect to the members of the Vancouver Club, I won't be showing any pictures of the food. We started off with a um, Malartic La Grivere Blanc 2018. I think I've reviewed that on this channel. It's not part of the winery, but the uh, I guess the agent who did the dinner brought in this wine also, and it was um, uh, it was paired with a beet and ginger cured hamachi with horseradish, granny apples, uh, granny smith apple and smoke roast. So it was a great um, first kind of pairing. We were hosted also by Victoire Touton, who is the manager of the Americas for Chateau Angeli. So very special night. Short video of the wine lineup. So we started the night with a um, red wine braised sturgeon with a black truffle sauce, which it was actually a really interesting pairing, you know, fish, but it was such a nice firm fish with red wine that it paired very well with the 2018 and 2020 Carillon uh, Angelis. So Carillon Angelis is the second label of Chateau Angelis. It is a separate vineyard. It was first released in 1987, so it's not really a second wine, but a second label. Um, generally, the vineyard is composition is 53% Merlot, 46% Cabernet Franc, Franc and 1% Petit Verdot. Um, it's usually um, aged about 22 months in oak and um, for the 2018 vintage it was 85% Merlot and 15% Cabernet Franc. So my tasting notes for the wine that night, um, I enjoyed it um, and I think from my perspective, I like the 2018 a little bit better than the 2020. My tasting note was more ready and a little softer than 2020, but still young. Dark plums, blackberries, black currants, and a silky finish needs another five years to assess, and that's 90 point rating. It was paired with the 2020 Carry On uh, Angelis, and to me, this was not as ready a wine. Um, so for me, the 18 was tasting a lot better that night. Um, but you know, again, these are both very youthful young wine, wines. So my tasting note for the 2020 was a little more, more, more low than the 2018. And the blend in that year was 90% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc. Um, it's grippier with some greenness on the aftertaste. There's still a lot of dark fruit, but the 10 level is pretty high and Right now, it's not that pleasurable, so I rated it 89 points. So both of these wines, pretty young. I think the 18 is more drinkable than the 20, which is, to me, not really drinkable right now. Um, but, um, you know, both of them have lots of potential. We need about five more years, at least, to assess both of them. Next pairing was the 2015 and 2016 Chateau Angelis with Pork Cheek. And so I didn't get a picture of the 15, but here's a picture of the 16. And I thought it was a really interesting pairing because these are two of some of the best vintages of um, Chateau Angelis around. So for the 2015, um, I thought it was structurally a great wine, but I didn't feel as that it had the same type of uh, hominess and um, comfort level that I had with the 2016. So I prefer the 2016 a little bit more, but great compare and contrast because this is structurally a great wine. The 16, I think, is a little bit more mellow and a little bit more warm. So my tasting note for the 15 was structurally great wine, lots of muscle with tannins and dark fruit, cocoa and tobacco on the aftertaste. Starting to approach its peak, but a great future ahead. 93 points now, but it will get to 95 at its peak. Um, so the 16, I thought it was a much more warmer vintage um, in terms of just the, on the palate. So I preferred it to the 2015, but just slightly. My tasting note, a bit warmer feeling on the palate, softer tannins and aftertaste. Fruit is more vibrant, whereas the 2016 is a little bit more pasty, the fruit. There's some earthy and loam aromas in the aftertaste and a slight smokiness at the end. Um, to me, this was a 95 point wine. 
Uh, next pairing was with the Hero Wagyu uh, beef, and we had the 2011 and the 2014 Chateau Angelis. Another great pairing um, to what you would call off vintages, but actually they're very, very drinkable right now and some of my favorite wines of the night. And so sometimes it proves it doesn't matter what the scores are or the ratings are, it's a matter of you know, what's drinking uh, nicely. So uh, let's go with the 2011. I thought it was the most drinkable of all the wines um, that were served the night. Really fleshy and um, you know just perfect at this point. Um, so my uh, tasting note, very ready to drink. And in the vertical between this and 14, 15, and 16, I thought it was the most accessible wine. Um, nice raspberry, black plums, and tobacco on the taste. Um, the tannins are soft and there's milk chocolate in the aftertaste. I think it's the only of the wines that is really in its drinking window and I think it'll drink well for the next five to eight years. So I scored it 93 points. With the 2014, I actually found it was still tannic and not really ready to drink. Um, my tasting note was it needs about five more years and there's a slight spiciness on the aftertaste. My rating is 92 points at this time. Um, I think the 14, 15, and 16 really need some more time as does the 18 and 20. The 11 is drinking very nicely right now and doesn't need any more time. Um, but I think the upside on the 15 and 16 is greater than on the 14. Uh, but again, very hard to assess young wines at this point. They're, they're definitely of good quality. And uh, at least with the 15 and 16, I think they will go uh, above 95 points in my mind eventually. I'm not sure 14 will get there. Um, but uh, again, very, very nice wines. This is me with Victoire Touton. Um, the representative of Chante Angelis, and she's such a great representative. Um, she's very genuine um, and very honest and, and fun and uh, knowledgeable. So uh, really great to share time with her. And she was mentioning that um, she thought one of the best vintages of Chateau Angelis is 1989, and I happened to have a bottle, so I opened it with her and um, again performed exceptionally very consistent tasting notes from my previous um, drinking of that wine and we both probably agreed that it is if not the best uh, one of the best vintages of Chateau Angelis ever made uh, my tasting note still the best Angelis I ever had it's perfect with no flaws silky smooth minerally metallic with lots of dark berry and chocolate aftertaste it's seductive and sexy and it has the best expression of Angelis, which is fun, racy, smooth, and balanced. So I had it at 98 points. Um, the previous tasting I had with this was um, candy fruit, confectionery store turning to oak, and red fruit aromas, uh, red currants, anise, and spice, and chocolate. It has all of this, and it's really um, well balanced at this point, so really ready to drink. In summary, what an exceptional night and a wonderful opportunity to drink, um, you know, six Chateau Angelis uh, products, and I added one myself. So in summary, I thought the Carry On Angelis wines were too young to really assess properly. They're obviously of good quality. Of the Angelis wines that we had, I thought the 89 was the standout, um, then followed by probably the 11, which was really drinking very nicely today and then the uh, 16 which i really love which has even more upside i thought the 14 was the least ready of the wines and the most tannic the 15 is very structurally sound and again just needs some time but i still think i will prefer the 15 the 16 over the 15 um, at least for now we'll see what happens in the future the 11 is the most ready to drink right now and i think if i had a choice to drink uh, a bottle, you know, pop and open right now of these bottles, it would be the 11. So it's a really interesting way to taste and it's a really useful to taste all these vintages all at once. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.